You are listening to the Free to Be Mindful podcast, which provides bite-sized tips for busy parents, educators, and anyone working with kids. These real talk conversations focus on mindful living, mental health, and personal growth, helping all to learn, grow, and inspire with mindfulness in mind. I'm your host, Vanessa De Jesus Guzman, educator, licensed professional counselor, entrepreneur, and mom. I'm passionate about helping folks live life with peace of mind and ease of heart while not losing their, well, you know, here we go. Hi, and welcome back to the Consulted Counselor series. In this series, I answer parenting related questions so that you can be present and at ease with your child and live life mindfully. Today's question is, I really don't know how to ask this, but I don't know how to connect with my kids. I'm barely ever with them because of my long work hours. Besides asking them how they're doing and checking to see how they're doing in school, I really don't know what to talk with them about or how to even play with them. Any help you can provide would be greatly appreciated. My friends, my heart goes out to you. And remember that we ourselves were once kids. So although we've done all this growing up in the past, however many years, we ourselves used to once play. And we ourselves had a good relationship with at least one other human in this world. So know that our kids, even though they can have big personalities or quiet personalities, even though sometimes they can have larger than life temper tantrums, regardless of age, they really are little humans. And the way in which perhaps you wish others would connect with you and take an interest in the things that you like, our kids are the exact same way. So as far as to what to talk with them about, there are actually a lot of questions that you can ask them on a regular basis. And I actually covered these questions in episode 131. So I'm going to link to that episode to give you some ideas of just general questions that you can ask besides how is your day or what you do in school? because we don't get too much information from those types of questions, but there are a lot of other questions that are just silly or fun in nature where you can get more of. Now, here's the deal. Regardless of the type of question that you ask, make sure that you're listening to them wholeheartedly. And that means the phone is away. That means you're making good eye contact. That means you are all in in what they're saying, even when it bores you. Try to find something interesting about it and ask follow-up questions, especially if it's a topic or if it's a game that they're passionate about, because we want to show our interest in whatever they're interested in. And that will at least begin to build the foundation for the relationship relationship that you have with your child. I said it in a just recent podcast that the relationship that you have with your child when they're young definitely makes an impact and paves the way for the type of relationship that you are going to have with your child when they grow up. And we don't want to wait until our kids are 18 or 21 to have a relationship with them. That really starts when they're babies, believe it or not. So as far as what to talk with them about, reference episode 131. As far as how to play with them, there are different forms of play that you can engage in with your kids. There's active play. And this might be the most tiring sometimes because it involves physical activity. So this is playing catch. This is dancing. This is going for a bike ride or going for a walk together. Anything where you're both active. And by the way, when you're engaging in active play and when it's parallel, meaning let's say when you're walking with your child and you're side by side, it's at those times that sometimes you can ask them some tougher questions or when they may bring up some tougher types of conversations because then there is no eye contact and it makes it a little less intimidating. So there is a plus for active play, not only for the play part, but also for the talking part. There's imaginative play, and that is a play that our young, young children love to engage in. So this allows them to use their imagination and their creativity, like when they dress up or when they build forts or when they put on a puppet show. And if you perhaps may not consider yourself good at 
doing the puppets with them, let's say, then make sure that you're an attentive audience member and you know how to be a part of an audience. So you can hoot and holler and make a big deal and ask questions to the puppets. And that's an easy way to engage in imaginative play without taking an active part as far as playing a character, but you can always play a spectator. There's educational play, and this type of play involves games and activities that help kids learn new skills or concepts, and this includes puzzles, board games, even educational apps. Now, when it comes to applications or anything having to do on an electronic device, we want to balance that out with things that aren't electronics, but we know that there is much value to what electronics bring to us. So whether it's educational or even if it goes out on a limb and it's like, Minecraft or Roblox or Fortnite or whatever it is that they're playing, we can either take a spectator role and watch them do it and ask some questions that way, or we can try to play Mario Kart with them. But going back to educational play, I cannot talk enough about the game Bananagrams, which I just brought from Target for my child. This is not an ad for Target or Bananagrams, but if they're interested, they can always call me because it's such a wonderful game. It's like Scrabble and the point of the game is is to see how many words you can create by using the tiles that you get and putting them together and who finishes first. This can be done with very young children. They do have a primary version of the game and older children as well. Then there's also sensory play. This type of play simulates the senses and it can include playing with Play-Doh or slime. They tend to love that finger painting, or exploring different types of textures. And if you're not into Play-Doh or slime because it drives me bananas and it's really hard to get out of carpet if that's what you have in your home, you can always do textures like playing with dried rice or dried beans or macaroni or pasta. You can always put things, let's say, in a big container and then put different toys in there and have them pick it out if they're on the younger end. There's also social play, and this is a play that involves interaction with others. And this can be whether it is playing with friends or siblings, participating in team sports, or attending play groups. And let's say if you go on a play date with a friend, if your child is younger, observe them so that you can ask follow-up questions to your child afterwards so that they can expand on what they thought about the play date or what they were doing, what they were imagining, whatever it is. And if you have kids over, let's say if you have older kids, do more listening than you do talking. You get a lot of information that way, but know that you can just hang out with them. Ask them to have a turn in the video game, even though you're probably not any good at it. Engage in them in conversation without being too weird. So don't have the need to really over explain or over talk, but just be there. Your presence counts for a lot. And when your child is ready to speak, be there to listen. And finally, there's outdoor play. And this includes exploring the outdoors, going for walks, playing in the park, having a picnic, going for hikes. So hopefully in all of these different forms of play that I just described to you, there's something that piques your interest depending on what you're interested in. And if you, let's say, just like to read books, then you can read a book with your child or have a book club if they're older and have conversation that way. There's a lot of conversation that can be prompted from the aspect of play. So the two go hand in hand. But again, to answer your overall question, you want to make sure that you have some kind of bond slash relationship with your child now. And that does begin with having simple conversations and play can definitely help them out. By incorporating these different types of play into your time with your kids, you could not only help them develop this range of skills and interests, but more importantly, you strengthen the bond that you have with them. So I hope this helped. If you think it could help another mom or dad friend, be sure to share it with them and subscribe or follow my podcast so that you don't miss the next one. If you have any questions for the Consult a Counselor series, you can always email me at podcast at free to be mindful.com or DM me on Instagram at counselor V de Jesus. And remember in a world where you are free to be anything that you want to be, you're always free to be mindful. Thanks so much and catch you next time.